and my name is uh, Glenn Hudson. I was born May 16, 1993 in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, very small town. Lived there with uh, my mom and grandmother until I was about three. Then my mom got married to uh, my dad and we moved down here to Austin, Texas, I believe in 1996. And I've been living here ever since. My mom and dad actually met in um, job, Gary Job Corps. Um, she had went there um, during my earlier years and that's where she met my, uh, well, I call him my father because um, he's taken care of me most of my life, even though he's not my bi bi biological father, um, but he's taken care of me and provided just like I was his own son. So, um, but they met, um, dated, talked for a couple of years and decided to tie the knot. And so that's what um, brought us here to Austin. And um, four other kids later, and I'm 23 year, years old now, um, we're still here. So um, that's how my, uh, I guess, how I got here. When, uh, when I was young, I attended um, Sims Elementary, which is not too far from here, um, right on Springdale and 12th Street. Uh, we lived around here for a few years. And then we moved up uh, near like Rumberg and uh, North Plaza area. Um, lived there for a while, and that's where I attended Hart Elementary. Um, and then we actually moved again when I was in the third grade. We stayed out near Decker Lake and Blue Bluff Road. Um, I attended Decker Elementary from third grade on up to uh, graduating, and I went to Maynard Middle School. Um, and then after that, we moved again, hopefully for the last time. Moved again, um, and we're, we moved to where we're at now. Um, I finished out at Pierce Middle School, which was really a, uh, a, uh, a experience, I guess I should say. Uh, it was very different from, uh, I went to Maynard Middle School. It was kind of a mixture of uh, students, races, and uh, you know, people with um, different ethics and backgrounds. Um, and when I got to Pierce, it's a little thugged out and wasn't quite my cup of tea. So it took me a while to adjust. Um, but that was an interesting year. Eighth grade year I spent there. That was a very interesting year. I had food fights, had kids stabbing one another, uh, but I made it. And so, uh, then I ended up going to Anderson High School, which was uh, a very good time in my life. Anderson High School uh, was probably one of the best premier high schools in Texas, actually. Um, they always did well with the different tests and things. Um, and what I like, it challenged you and got you prepared for if you were trying to go to college, things like that. Um, and you know, starting out as a youngster, freshman year, didn't go out too well. Um, I liked it to play basketball. I liked to play basketball even to the point where you skip class and play basketball. Um, but we eventually got on track with the help of uh, my parents and got on track um, and did pretty good in high school. And um, after high school, um, I did attend Capital City Trade and Tech and um, I got my uh, degree in EPA um, in HVAC. Um, heating, ventilation, and AC work. Um, and from there, they actually, um, my second job, uh, that's where I started doing AC work for ARS. Um, but all while I was in school, I was working at Randall's um, grocery store. Um, starting out at minimum wage, um, but they were very flexible. And I worked all through trade school which allowed me to have money in my pockets and uh, was able to get all my work done and, and uh, try to get the best grades possible. And it worked out and then they helped me get a uh, very nice job. So that's all my uh, school background as of now. I actually worked for ARS um, 
for two years. Um, that's kind of where I've, I got my uh, basics and learned more. Trade school is good, but they teach you the basics and they deal with a lot of book work. And some is hand on, but it's nothing like getting in the field experience. And that's what ARS gave me. I started off as a helper um, for an install, install cruise. How they had, um, usually it was a lead man and a helper, and you would get a job. You know, if a technician went into a home and they came to a conclusion that the system needed to be completely replaced, they got an agreement together and price is right with the customer, then the install crew would come in there and you would install. It would start from the ducts, or it can include the ducts. It's not always ducts. It could include the ducts. Um, your, either your, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, in your heater, uh, your coil fans inside, and then your condenser unit that's outside. Um, and you would have to run, um, new copper lines and things like that sometimes. Um, so that's where I started out of. Um, when you're a helper, most of the time you are just, um, taping and putting mastic, um, you just help them move the stuff up there, and when they're putting the units together, you have to connect them with masking tape. And then it's something we used to call boopy, um, but everybody kind of knows now uh, mastic. It's a white texture, um, kind of like a glue, um, that once it dries, it rock hard and it keeps things together. Um, so as a helper, that's mainly what you did a lot until you started to kind of graduate. Um, so I did that for a while, and then I moved on to weatherization. Um, weatherization um, kind of included dealing with energy efficiency in your homes. Um, that's where either blowing insulation into your attic, um, putting weather stripping on the doors, changing windows, um, putting caulk on different openings you had in your house. Anything where air could leak out, we wanted to cover it and have everything tight so all that air could be in here and not flowing outside of your house. It's just like if you got cracks in your door, it's like you're slipping dollar bills through each crack and you're losing money. That's why a lot of people, electricity bills was $600 a month. I mean, come on, that's, that's, that's a car payment on a nice car. So um, things like that, we came in and changed. I was a helper with that for a while, and then I actually became the lead guy, uh, which was pretty nice. Um, gained more experience um, and had really had a blast with that because you got to blow insulation in the attic. You know, you had a machine that was blowing out stuff, and you didn't there just spraying, you know. And so it was a nice, uh, nice experience. I then became a service technician, um, which dealing with AC, I guess, at this particular company, that's kind of the top of the food chain, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I got my own van, um, got all my equipment and tools, and um, I started going out to residential homes and um, servicing people that were having problems with the AC or just yearly checkups. Um, only thing I necessarily didn't have a total problem with, but kind of was annoying sometimes, especially when it was slow, is AC job basically paid by commission. So it was a certain percentage, um, you had to sell some equipment, and the weather was not particularly bad this summer. So everybody knows that heat is what causes systems to mess up. Um, the weather wasn't that bad, so systems were behaving. And you had to try to advertise or sell something that particularly a customer could need and could use. But at the present time, they didn't. And it was times, man, where I was working like 70 hours a week. When you're the new guy, when you're young and you're the new guy, especially in fields like AC or, you know, just... Almost any field. When you're a new guy and you're young, they gonna if and if they're paying you commission, they're gonna have you 
working almost every day, 10 to 12 hours. I was working 70 hours a week and sometimes coming home with a $300 paycheck. So I went from being lead man to install or doing install, um, sorry, lead man of weatherization and doing install. I mean, at one time when it was popping in summer, it's hot. I was making like $1,000 a week, you know, um, even 1200 at some point. Um, so that's a very drastic drop. You know, from a thousand, twelve hundred to three hundred dollars, and so um, this came uh, a time where I had to try to find something else, and um, I eventually did. Um, circumstances um, didn't allow me to leave ARS pleasantly, um, but I left whatsoever and um, got another AC job um, dealing with scrap metal and everything. Um, and one thing I found out is that no matter how much a job pays, you can always learn something or find something valuable in it. And I did go to a job where I was making nine dollars an hour, and coming from you know ARS, my hourly wage was fourteen. So even if I had to go help somebody, you know that's when I get my hourly wage. But most of the time it was commission when you're working on call. Uh, but my hourly hourly wage was 14 when I was helping someone. So, you know, to go down to $9, um, it was not pleasant. But um, I learned to make the most of my opportunity. And I learned some very valuable things in scrap business. If, if you learn how to scrap, you will never, ever be broke for the rest of your life because you have just developed a hustle. Um, Everything that people throw away is money. Everything. People people don't know that when they put stuff on the side of the road. Like I told my parents, every time we got a new washer and dryer, this is before I was doing scrap metal, we don't wash it, throw away a washer or a dryer or, you know, or some metal desk, something like that. We put it on the side of the road in about an hour. Somebody would come. Usually it would be the Hispanics. They'll come because they know. They'll come and they'll pick it up and they'll be gone. And we used to wonder, like, man, why are they picking it up? Like, it's broke, you know? And then when I started doing scrap work, I understood why. And so the next time we were replacing something, I said, no, no, no. Let's take this in the backyard. I'll break it down. We can make 15, 20 bucks out of it. Because that's all they were doing. And scrap, that's what you do. Um, and you have to, you, and it's very valuable because you have just developed a money making way um for the rest of your life i mean even if you you need a couple you need some gas money just go scrap people put stuff on the side of the road all the time if you got a truck man you can make money all the time so um with that company i did learn a lot I, and i actually started um driving uh bigger vehicles um like box trucks and i learned how to um, drive a trailer which was very intriguing um when i first started driving it it was scary because um, one thing you got to remember when you're trying to back up a trailer it's opposite if you turn right the trailer is gonna go left and so sometimes you forget that and if you you gotta go slow if you're speeding up a little bit you might almost hit something because you forgot but i eventually got it and man i enjoyed it making my nine dollars an hour <laughs> I enjoyed it, um, you know, because I took something from it. And then um, after that job, uh, I had got another job offer working for Abco. It's a paper company. Um, uh, a couple of guys from my church actually um, helped me in getting that job. Um, and we dealt with a lot of um, restaurants with their plastic uh, plates, forks, napkins, Soap, I mean, just different necessities that stores need. That was something that we delivered to them um, on a regular basis. And I uh, got to travel with some of the guys. Um, they even delivered to Texas State University, uh, supplied all their um, janitorial supplies also, um, the plates, um, just, just everything, accessories, all that um, they supplied. And so it was... That was another ex experience. Um, 
one thing I tell people, man, every job just try to try to take the good out of it and um, and try to learn because you learn. I didn't know how to work a fax machine, okay? And at this job, I learned how to work a fax machine. <laughs> so uh, I mean, it's something little, but hey, you learn something. Um, and so after this job, I um, am where I am now at Austin Cab, uh, working. Um, for and I guess under uh, Mr. Ryan Means, uh, my assistant manager here. Um, and what I realized is a lot of things I learned from previous job, I'm able to apply here, which will make the company better, um, help us make money, and uh, just overall, just working together. Um, so it's been quite an experience, um, but I'm excited, man. We're trying to do new things. Um, trying to create more revenue, of course. Everybody likes making more money. Um, and you know, we're just trying to, just trying to be a valuable asset to society and uh, provide premium customer service. I mean, that's what it's all about. Um, you make the customers happy, you'll be happy, you know? So if you make a customer happy, he get on Yelp or he get on Google reviews, he's gonna give you a good review. And believe me or not, as everyone know, Everybody looks at um, reviews. I do it. When you better download an app on your phone and you're not quite sure if it works or not, where do you go? You go to the reviews and you read and you look. So it's very important that you get a good review because the outlook that this person had, they're going to express it and other people are going to look at that and they're going to make their decisions just on one or two reviews. And so the more good reviews we have, the more customers that we get. And that's the thing, man. You try to tell um, drivers and everyone, just provide good customer service, man, and they'll keep coming to you. And uh, that's what it's all about. And our job as a management team, um, we just try to make sure everything is straight, um, make sure that we're making things easier, and um, we just kind of helping stay afloat and trying to do things that help us make money and help put money in the customers, um, I'm sorry, not the customers, in the driver's pockets because they drive for a living. They want to make money. They got families to feed. Um, they got bills to pay, just like everybody else. Um, so I think that's what it's all about. And um, I'm enjoying it, man. It's, uh, it's a good experience. And I'm been having to do things that... Um, I've never done before, but it's putting me in a position that um, is making me a better person. And um, it'll help me career-wise, because who knows? I mean, um, what career um, or what other job might come a long time from now or even another position here? I mean, um, it's just all stepping stones and building a solid foundation for me. So I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm taking full advantage of it. Five or ten years from now, um, hopefully married. <laughs> um, I have uh, expressed an um, interest in the young lady, so um, that's one of my priority goals. Um, be married, maybe have a little junior around here. I don't know, <sighs> kids. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's one of the goals. Um, also, uh, I want to stay um, very active in church. Uh, so I just want to get more active and stay busy. If you stay busy, it keep you out of trouble. Um, you know, be active in my church. Um, being able to give back to the community. Um, if I'm here at Austin Cab, hopefully take in a, a stronger and bigger role in helping making us greater. Um, you know, and just being a better me you know, um, helping others, um, growing and maturing as a young black man, um, and, and hopefully not thinking that I know it all and trying to take advice from um, people that's already been there and done that. Because one thing I personally um, came to the conclusion is that a lot of things I don't need to go and experience. If other people have done it and they're telling me not to go that route, it would 
behoove me to go ahead and to listen. And that way I don't have to go through that because, I mean, I go through that, it's just going to, I'm going to have to go through things anyway, you know, because I'm going to make, every once in a while you're going to make a stupid decision and you're going to have to pay the consequences, but I don't want to deliberately say he didn't told me not to do this and then I go ahead and say, well, I want to go ahead and test it out, you know, um, but you know, just become a better me and um, a better person, you know. Um, that's just it. I want to uh, keep my relationship with God, uh, actually make that even more greater. Uh, because when you really think about it, man, you you can't do anything without God on your side, man. It's, it's, uh, it's very important and imperative, man, that you keep God first. And, you know, that's, I've been taught that growing up from my dad and mom, um, you know, even my pastor at church, you know, it's, it's very important. And I mean, once you keep God and you acknowledge him and um, everything you do, man, he'll bless you. And, and man, you just be surprised, man, thing, how things happen. And, you know, that's just foremost what I try to keep in my mind and, um, you know, just let him have his way and, hey, go along for the ride. Well, I go to First Pentecostal Church of Austin. Uh, my pastor is uh, Suffragan Bishop Ruby F. Hall. Um, I'm, uh, I, I play uh, the piano. I'm in the music department at church. Um, do participate in the choir. Um, I try to be active with our young people's department. Um, especially we do a lot of different things. Um, my pastor, I mean, she's she's a, a a woman that really likes to give, and she, the kids, <laughs> whether it's taking them to Arkansas or taking them to Six Flags, I mean, she does a lot, a lot for them, and um, you know, you need help with that, you know, as far as watching kids or just helping doing stuff. So we do things like that. Um, also, we have different fundraisers and stuff. I try to stay pretty active um, as far as helping along with that um and just being you know if they need me just be there you know they need you to come down and clean some chickens for a barbecue like we had to do uh last thursday stayed there almost 12 o'clock uh in the morning um and i didn't want to see another piece of chicken for a few days but um i mean just whatever you find your hands to do i mean that's what you do and um that's that's how I try to kind of keep my attitude, just kind of be active and uh, be willing to do different things because the church, I mean, they said they have helped me, you know, and we we help each other in the church and then we go out beyond on the streets and stuff and help people. So um, why not give back and uh, help where you can? I would say stay productive. Um, Listen and and just, you know, don't think you know it all. I mean, because that's where you get in trouble. Um, bad influences can come in. And see, this is really, this is my, my opinion. Um, I think that a lot of kids, they have good intentions and, and they are focused. This is, I'm going to use myself, for example. I would be focused in school for the first two or three months. And then you would maybe see uh, some new friends or something, and you would start trying to do what they want to do, or you start, or maybe even if it's a girl, man, girls would do it, man. You know, you start trying to talk to some girls and stuff, and then your focus is just gone. And then you come to class and you worried about trying to talk and impress this female or impress this group of friends and not do your work, you know, um, and as, as young, it's very important that you pay attention in school because the better you do in school, the better chances you have of going to college or getting free money. And as a young black man, you know, parents, all parents don't have a bunch of money to pay for your college. So as much free money as you can get, you need to be trying to get it because free money is for college. I mean, change it. Free money for college is usually good, but free money dealing with uh, college or your education, 
um, getting grants and uh, or uh, you know just scholarships I mean it's good so I would say man just stay focused in school and, and just do your work and and try to be you know attentive and respect if you respect the teachers man you can always get teachers on your side and see I'm saying all of this because I know the question was how you can become a productive citizen or adult it all starts at home and at school if you're able to respect and to do your work and all these different things and just have the mindset of trying to be productive at a young age when you get older and you get to becoming getting a job or working for someone else all those traits follow over and you'll be a productive employee you know because you're respectful um you're uh, courteous um you're able your own time i mean if you go to class on time that's really and one thing I've uh, realized is that school is just preparing you for work anyway. They had times that you had to be on time for class. And if you were late, then they, it was a penalty or they punished you or marked you down or whatever. Same thing at work. If you come in late one day or two day and it's notice, you might get a warning. Then if it keeps happening, you'll get written up. And then eventually you don't get fired. And at school, it's saying you keep being late, you either go to, you know, uh, Saturday school or whatever they got in place now. But school was really, really prepping all of us for just real life and work. And that's why it's important. That's why school is uh, very important. It's very important for you to pay attention and be respectful because all those things, it'll come up to when you're an adult. And that's why it's, they... Um, now, I mean, I'm just talking about a personal experience. I got guys 40 and 50 years old that I just be like, wow. You know, you acting like, how you acting is how normally a 20 or 19 year old would be acting, but you're 50 years old and you have not grasped the concept of just being a mature adult or handling your business. That's what it's all about. You work to get money and to provide for your family um maybe to give to others um church you know different things we all have our reasons why we work and why we need money we need money to survive so if you're working to do all that you have to carry yourself a certain way and you have to behave you have to go by the code of conduct things like that and if you couldn't do it in school it's no wonder you're 40 50 years old now and you can't do it because you haven't learned it yet um so i think school is important and once we realize that, then man, it's, it's, it's not, I don't want to say it's a gravy train, but it's not hard to transition. And so, yeah, that's what I would have to say, man. Take it, take it serious. Because when you get older and you're trying to make moves, man, and you're trying to move your way up the food chain, you're going to need all those things, man. It's going to come back to you. You're going to need every last one of them. So, yeah.